survivability, really long range recovery, right? So, um, but we'll see how Beast is able to pilot the Pokemon trainer up against the Cat's Pichu here. Uh, both very small Pokemon uh, um, fighting in the beginning here. And both these characters, they want really big combos off of grabs. So we'll see who is able to get these grabs. Looks like Nakat is the first one able to get the grab, already racking up that 62% and forcing the Ivysaur out already. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, if you're going to succeed with Squirtle, which Beast does not generally rely upon, but they have made an effort a little bit more in recent weeks to try and make that a more complete Squirtle, just a neutral winning machine. Right. But if you're going to get kills with Squirtle, it's going to be off of some jab lock shenanigans. But that's not really what they're going for. They're going to just get the ledge cheese with Ivysaur however they possibly can. And of course, this Zard, the one that's kind of made them their uh, bread and butter. They're Beast Zard on Twitter. And yeah, that uh, just goes to show they were a Zard main in Smash 4, if that explains anything at all. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Obviously, can't play the solo Zard anymore. Might as well learn the other two as well. Makes sense. I mean, you can. It's just a matter of how stubborn you are. And true, true. I wouldn't put that past Beast, but nevertheless, you can't really put that first stock past the Cat, who again, you know, Pichu did uh, did quite well to make top eight at Smash the Splash all those uh, all those years ago. And with uh, with events like Riptide starting up again, I'm getting excited just talking about it. Could be feeling the tide one way or another. The Squirtle has something to say about it. Yeah, absolutely. Right there, uh, Beast almost getting the KO with the uh, forward tilt. That is one of the pretty much most consistent ways Squirtle can get KOs is through the uh, jab lock off of forward tilt or like landing fair. But the Squirtle just going straight into the Ivy, then straight into the Zard here. See if be able to land the back air. Beast is looking. The up throw will connect though. Getting these dash grabs on deck, and the cat spawning in. And the one thing about Pichu, um, just generally very volatile. I, I mean, as long as the stocks is even, it doesn't matter the percent for either characters. Like anything can happen in a game like that, especially with Pichu on the board. Yeah, and jab locks into the F smash that uh, Zard. Hey, luckily you're on the heaviest character in the set, right? But not a whole lot you can do about that there. A little bit of damage to the cat, a lot of damage to Beast, and. That's going to be one stock. Jab locks. And oh, not able to connect. Beast not quite there just yet, but going to sweep him right across the stage. And yeah, a lot of reliance on the uh, on the Squirtle and perhaps Ivysaur to just supplement it. Maybe able to take the stock here. Uh oh, but the Zard is out. The platform tech saving <laughs> saving Beast a lot of damage there. Um, okay, the up air, the hurtbox shift, maybe able to get the uh, like kind of trade with that. And honestly, not too bad. Like I said, even though Pichu has an incredible lead, you know, the thing with Pichu is you can just get KO'd so extremely early. You have to be very, very careful as the Pichu player here. Oh, there's oh. The it's big damage. And at, at this point, even a back air from Charizard will take the KO, especially right at the edge here. Cat able to, oh, the fly? Able oh. to get the armor, but still off stage here. Please do not summon the beast back here, cheese. I've, <laughs> I've seen it far too many times for a man to be sane. Hey, the way kind of look to just run up and put the claws in the face of that Pichu. Just rolling about. Pichu is going to be able to pull up it smash, up. I think. That was a weird look. I, I think that was I up think smash. I think that was up smash, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but man, that looks strange. <laughs> Yeah, very stressful game, and and that's the one thing about Pichu. Uh, if you pick Pichu and you compete with Pichu, you are definitely inducing stress onto your opponent as well as yourself all the time. <laughs> it's a it's a very stressful environment to compete in. But uh, Nakat pulling through with that up smash, finishing the stock. But I mean, even for us, it was it, it looked pretty horrifying, right? Charizard max rage, your Pichu sitting around like 60 or 80 percent. Almost any move from Charizard's kid's gonna kill you at anywhere on the stage. But going right into this game number two, it looks like we're not getting any character switches, and it looks like we're on the same stage as well. Beast, who's done so well, won so many of those uh, Collision Series tournaments and uh, done pretty well for themselves offline as well, winning a few of the vacations, uh, bears here and there, and uh, now going up against some elite competition. Surely they have missed this, and really all they wanted was an opportunity to prove themselves. And while I would say that they've uh, always come up real close against some of these top players, certainly in the cat, no exception to that uh, particular description. I mean, Beast, they're missing something to put themselves over the top, and it makes you wonder, are they going to be able to discover it here and now? Yeah, absolutely. Beast, th this time the Squirtle coming out to play here, racking up the lead and not even opting to switch off, just staying on the Squirtle here. 
Uh, going for the down tilt two frame, very, very good move to go for against Pichu. Pichu does not have a very great ledge snap, but here comes the Ivysaur. Pichu already at 121%. Any up air, any down air, especially off stage, will do the trick here. Okay, but here comes the Zard. The up smash out of shield is a threat here, and the cat just opting to completely <laughs> remove and get away. And there's the forward tilt poke, able to steal out the stock. And staying on the Zard, usually we see uh, most PT in this situation switch into the Squirtle for damage, but wow, Beast very confident in the Zard here. Ooh, with the tech as well on that Thunder, Beast is playing very well this stock. Incredibly so. And yeah, this is the sort of gameplay that we've come to expect. They are willing to just kind of frustrate people with the Zard, those errant little flamethrowers here and there. Uh, maybe not errant, but definitely particularly placed for peak annoyance. And yeah, the Zard, the, the back air threatening him with this existence. Yeah. Yeah. And that is why when Beast makes a threat, it's a promise. Three stocks to one for the Allentown, Pennsylvania native. Okay, the air dodge away going to the ledge. Uh, very nice there. Um, not even going for a tech chase situation. There's the Nair, and we could see another, you know, maybe Nair into back air. Uh, oh, man, another couple no. back airs there, and that could be, I mean, it could just be a three stock here for Beast. Just oh, my goodness, no. Smash. Beast. Wow, we are, we are <laughs> out here. Oh, the okay. flare blitz. Oh, the flare gosh. blitz. The Beast special. <laughs> How about a three stock? Wow, the Zard would just not die there, and and I just feel like the way the way Nakat was playing too is like you're not gonna go for the wild option. You're just not gonna do it. And Beast have you is, met Beast? <laughs> have you ever met this man? The no, they will out. absolutely do that. Yeah, the unreal. Back air, the back airs were out. The jump in the flare blitz was out. We are. We were just throwing out the crazy options, and it, it was working. And I mean, really, kind of threw threw a cat off guard and was able to get the three stock. Uh, looks like we are getting a controller reset. I think we're good to go. Yeah, we're good to go. Oh. What's going on here? I think we're good. Yeah, I. Uh, sorry, I had my I had my head in my hand for just a little bit there because again, how how many times is Beast going to just? do that he can't keep getting away with this charles yeah i'm sorry that is just absolutely ridiculous but it's just the sort of stuff that you get accustomed to i guess in uh in philly where they do this to so many players and no one's immune to it not even the cat oh absolutely not and i think uh i think even just for a cat i think shutting down the zard is going to be the main focus going into this game number three um even like i'm assuming this isn't the cat's first time playing against beast um and so it's kind of like you're, you're scouting out which and i mean and that's something you have to do against a lot of pt players um really just scout out which which pokemon's their best and knowing like which Pokemon to respect the most, like in neutral and in advantage state, disadvantage, all that jazz. So the cat definitely has the info, and the Zard is out right now. Um, whoever gets this very first stock, we saw how impactful it was that second game, and it looks like Beast is able to get that first stock here. And the cat trying to close this one out. The up throw, maybe. Okay, wow, we do get a mash out, no throw. Okay, getting a little greedy with some of these pumbles. Back here, not going to connect on that ledge roll. Here's the up throw into the thunder that is going to wipe the stock. Only taking about 7% there, and that was pretty much just for, for through the uh, like the self damage. And you were spot on with your assessment. This is, in fact, the first time they have played each other in a competitive setting. But yeah, this is the thing. Even if they were playing before, this Squirtle is looking a lot more complete than it was at any other point in Beast's career. A little something special for the return of offline going to catch that. Uh, Gonna catch that recovery towards ledge, wow. and yeah, you thought you could go above me. Turns out, nah, bro. Hot. We got the we got the pumps going all day, and the cat all of a sudden on their last stock here in game number three. But never one to say that they're down and out. And the cat fights back. Gonna have to do so against the Zard. That's a threat in of itself. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, very great stuff from the beast. From the beast squirtle uh, able to close out the stock with the parry uh, parry in the up smash definitely not an option you see too often but a, a fantastic punish on the ledge drop double jump there a lot of the ooh, and a very good edge guard coming ooh. out from the cat and definitely one of the biggest reasons the cat likes to play pichu is because of the edge guard potential obviously the uh you know being small in neutral helps a lot and just the combo game itself is you know really really fun and explosive with pichu but the cat definitely favoring the edge guard loves the ability to just go off stage and really just push that advantage 
Here oh. it is. Oh, okay. Goonies in there. Does very well to shield. Was tempted to press a button. I mean, that is Beast kind of MO. Looking for the Flare Blitz. Maybe a little ill-advised, but uh, nevertheless, going to land safely for it. It's going to be the back air, and the Pichu comes away charred and burned, thus bearing the mark of the Beast. Yeah, really good stuff from the Beast Zard coming through with the back airs. Yeah, back air just.